Hey everybody, what's going on? Dustin here with another NASCAR Diecast review, and today we're taking a look at our second newest driver that we're going to add into my collection of reviews. Two things first. One, I am a little bit under the weather. Two, if you did not saw the uh, previous diecast review, my uh, my fan stopped working and my light stopped working as well. So my whole entire ceiling fan is just it's out at the moment. Uh, unfortunately, there is a uh, electrical short in it. So today. <sighs> We are taking a look at our first ever Brandon Brown Talladega race win. And for those wondering, yes, this is the very same Talladega race where the uh, Let's Go Brandon actually happened. Because his first win was forever barred by that. Now, a little bit of history. I will explain more about that whole uh, entire situation. Uh, at the end, so let's go ahead and take a look. So, what you get in here, I I forgot to uh, put in there, put in a, with the Take Fogelman video last time. All right, first of all, I apologize if you hear me a little bit under the weather. I forgot to include the race wear sticker. Well, in this case. It's red for the Xfinity, blue for the Truck Series, and bottle chrome for the X, uh, Cup Series. Oh man, I don't feel too well, guys. I'm sorry if you hear me this sick. So here's the race winner card. The Brandon Brown Sparks 300 winner from Talladega, Alabama. Same day as the Truck Series race, uh... Since this was a doubleheader race, just like Atlanta. Hold on, I'm going to sneeze real quick. Sorry about that. I had to pause the recording and uh, sneeze real quick. So uh, I'm sorry for the interruptions. On the back of the card, we get the uh, race race info. Time of the race took 2 hours and 4 minutes 55 seconds. Brandon Brown started 19th. Total laps of 107. There were five cautions for 21 laps. Brandon Brown only led eight, and margin of victory well, is actually under two conditions. One, it was under caution. Yes, it was. But two, it was cut short due to darkness. So that's kind of a couple of key factors in there. So. I'm not going to waste any more time on this one, so I'm going to go ahead and get the car up off the base. I'll be right back. And I'm back. It didn't take long to get the car up off the base, just a couple of screws on the bottom, and the car is good to go now. Let's take a look at this car from the front to the back. This is the uh, Brandon Built Motorsports, number 68, Larry's Hard Lemonade Brewing Company. Oop, focusing issue. Here we go. This is a Camaro, number 68. We got the Larry's Hard Lemonade Brewing Company. I actually do want to try this. Uh, if anybody uh, can send me some Larry's Hard Lemonade, just uh, hit me up. And this is their logo. Now, it is actually uh, decorated pink for a breast cancer awareness since the race was actually ran in October. Really nice that little touch with the uh, pink ribbon in there. Also, we got a uh, looks like dirt or something up on the windshield. That looks pretty cool. We also have the number sixty-eight. We got Brandon's Brown up on the name rail, and also the American flag decal. Looking from the driver's side. <coughs> Excuse me. We have Simpson Belts, we have Sunoco, and we have Goodyear. We also have the uh, a monochrome American flag in the background, which is pretty awesome, just flying away in the wind. We also have the NASCAR Experience Series, ARP Mobile One. 
We also have the 68. And on here, we have what? We have one thing about Larry's Hard Lemonade veteran owned and operated. That's awesome. We need more veteran owned businesses, too. We have the Mid Atlantic, we have Wix Filters, Pro Fabrication, Mechanics Wear, Safety Clean, Race, Race Electronics. We got the Larry Par Lemonade Sponsorship. We also have the Trade the Chain. Up on the B Pillar, I believe. We have Jars Construction and Brandon Built Foundations. And that phone number's on there too. We have the Cool Boo Window Films. On the back we have the original Hard Larry's Hard Lemonade. Enjoy responsibly. Now for every alcohol related sponsor on these diecast reviews. I always leave a little note in there saying that I do not condone underage drinking or buying alcohol for under for minors. So, if you are under the age of 21, please do not consume alcohol. But if you are over 21, do enjoy responsibly and be a good teammate. Always hire a designated driver. Always have a game plan. We have the deck lip on top the uh, Larry's Lemonade do check out their website down in the description below I will link it down there we also have Brandon Brown's name on the uh, back as well and the other side is the same hard to believe this car is actually relatively clean we also have Larry Wilson I believe that Larry is the owner which is really fitting to have his name right along And on this side, we have the chassis, the uh, plastic molding for the exhaust, the engine transmission. I'm going to sneeze again real quick. thought I was gearing up for a sneeze, but I didn't. <laughs> so here we got the engine as well. We're also underneath is the Chevy Volta now. His first win. Now, your first wins are very important, but... Not all the time it can be marred by something else. Well, in this case, Brandon Brown's first win was actually forever marred by his uh, post-race interview. And for those that actually did watch the uh, Talladega race, I know I was one of those. They did call the race due to darkness, and when they announced Brandon Brown's the race winner, it was pretty much set in stone. However, when he was doing his uh, burnout and during his uh, post-race interview... You can actually hear the fans, you know, chanting something that derogative, but it didn't even sound like, you know, something towards Brandon Brown. It was like something much more derog derogative towards somebody else. Like, all I remember was hearing F. Joe Biden, and that was it. And the announcer who had to do damage control thought they were chanting. Let's go, Brandon. And all of a sudden, it just took off from there. And uh, no matter where you go, you can always hear his, uh, you, you see, let's go, Brandon, everywhere. You see it on shirts. You see it on hats. You see it on, uh, on bumper stickers. You see it just about anywhere. And poor Brandon Brown, he got caught in the midst of it. You know, it was not his fault that it happened. It's not like he orchestrated the whole thing to happen. And however, for this year, that's why this year they were trying to do a OGB coin, even though it was approved. Then they. The NASCAR pulled back on it. It was like, what is going on? You approve the sponsor in the beginning, and then all of a sudden you want to pull it. And 
And let me tell you my experience about the uh, Let's Go Brandon chant. Well, it wasn't actually a really, really big deal for me. Now, the first time I actually did hear this, well, everybody knows that this, it actually did came around uh, last year in September when it started happening. And it really wasn't much of a big deal. But however, when I was at Metallica on November 6th, I heard like a couple of people chain it. It wasn't really, back then, it wasn't really much of a big deal. If anybody were to have the, uh, the audio CD of the concert from Atlanta, if right before For Whom the Bell Tolls, you can, if you have a good ear, you can really hear it. And I was one of those that actually heard it. I'm like, is that what I think they're saying? Somebody below me, I think next to me, started saying it. And it was like, just right before the encore songs, we were actually doing the Tomahawk Chop. And of course, you know, Braves won the World Series, so figure might as well do that. And then somebody was chanting, let's go Brandon, and... To be honest, the tomahawk chops were so loud, it was fairly noticeable. And then, Atlanta Motor Speedway, earlier this year. In my campsite, I've had a couple of drunk morons. You know, just blaring at Blaring out anti-Democrat music. You know, just walking around. I was like, okay, no harm, no foul. But if they don't come to my campsite, we, ha we won't have a problem. And all of a sudden, they came to our campsite, banged our tent, and that's when we had a problem. And also, in that same race weekend, um, if you have not noticed my Xfinity vlog, and the reason why I censored out the F. Joe Biden chance was... Because I want to keep my videos, you know, NASCAR friend, keep them as uh, friendly as I can, you know, for mixed audiences, like for adults and children alike. And I really don't like having, having all that going. Because I'm like, oh my god, if YouTube catches me with that, I'm going to be in so much trouble. So, the chants, just like what I said, are, were very unintentional. It was out of my control. And I don't really think I heard much of it after uh, my recent trip to Atlanta Motor Speedway. So, I think that's my little experience and story. So, anybody, anyway, if you like this like, if you like this video, leave a like. Subscribe to this channel for more NASCAR diecast reviews. I try to publish them out the best way I can. However, I am a Circle B Diecast affiliate. Use coupon code Kruger at checkout for $5 off shipping on all orders, $30 or more. So, anyway, that's for the last time. My name is Dustin, and I will see you guys in another video.